What's up friends and welcome back to episode number 21 of my poker vlog. For those of you that are new, welcome and that's a lot of you. I, I know because I gained like a thousand subs in the past two days because of the video I posted of my biggest win ever. If you haven't checked that out, you can click like up here somewhere and there'll be a little card for that. If not for the rest of you, I'll get right into the hands. That's what I do here. You're going to like this episode. It's a fun one. And at the end of the video, I go over a couple mistakes I made in the last video. So if you're one of the haters that commented on the last video, don't worry. I went over a couple of the mistakes I made in the edit and the audio portions of that video as always thanks for watching please like and subscribe if you like my content and I'll catch you guys in the video so I was casually perusing through my favorite poker websites on the interwebs one night and noticed a meetup game being held by two fellows by the name of Brad Owen and Andrew Nimi having lived under a rock for the past year I jumped on this new website you probably never heard of typed their names in to see what was up I browsed their pages watched a few videos had a few laughs and then noticed that Brad Owen had 30 million channel views Last time I recall, that was more than the population of North Korea. Naturally, I had to reach out to him and find out more about the event, so I went to get his email, but I wasn't able to pass the CAPTCHA test due to the fact that I'm a GTO robot. So I hopped in my car, made the hour and a half drive down to the Hawaiian Gardens, and I had to see what was going on for myself. We ran into some fans of the vlog, one of which who wanted to say what's up. Shout out to Alex, man. We're here at the gardens. Congratulations on everything you're doing, and I hope you do a good time today. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. And after exchanging some pleasantries with viewers, we hopped into the 2-3-200 max because the meetup game hadn't started yet. First hand, we have around 175 in our stack. We looked down at ace-deuce offsuit from the under-the-gun plus one position. Folds to me, I raise it up to $12 and get called by the middle position and the cutoff. So we're going three ways to the flop with around $41 in the pot, which comes ace-deuce seven with two spades. We flop uh, top and bottom pair. Pretty good flop. I'm going to bet $25 into this $41 pot. Middle position player folds and the cutoff calls. Uh, I think this is an obvious bet here because we have two pair, but also because the front door spade draw is pretty apparent. So we need to be concerned about that going to the turn. The turn with $91 in the pot comes a six of spades. I bet half pot here for $45. He now uh, takes a little while and jams for $90. Obviously, we don't love this because of what we just said about the spade draw, but uh, it's only $45 to win around a pot of $270, so we're not going to fold at this point. We put in the call, and the river comes the 10 of diamonds. He shows us the bad news of 9, 10 of spades, and he scoops this pot. We top off our stack, and we look down at ace, queen, offsuit from the small blind. Is a very active loose player who opens up to $15. Two calls to me, and I do something unorthodox here, and I shove my entire stack in. Uh, I want to isolate the action player, and I don't think the two limpers can profitably call this jam, uh, unless they're trapping with a really good hand. They just uh, called the raise from the action player. They didn't isolate him and raise on their own, so I don't think that they're ahead of our range at this point sure enough the action player puts in the call for less which we actually wanted to see and everyone else folds i ask if he wants to show his cards uh, before the cards come out he says sure he has six seven offsuit so we need to fade a couple of cards and we're going to scoop this pot heads up to the all-in with 200 in the pot which comes jack six deuce unfortunately he hits a six right on the flop we need an ace or a queen the return is a brick the river is another brick and his bad play gets rewarded uh, by the poker gods with a double up through us. Ultimately, I lost around $386 in the 40 minutes waiting for the meetup game. I got called for the meetup game. It's a 5-5, 300 to 600 capped game. I bought in for a tilting amount, as you can see here. So we're in this meetup game. We played for about two hours until I uh, decided to put a hand in the vlog. Literally nothing has happened. However, we're going to spice things up here with a double board bomb pot, and we have 10-5 offsuit. Uh, pretty marginal, but a double board bomb pot, you never know. We're in late middle position, and the first flop comes 10 of hearts, 3 of hearts, ace of clubs. The second flop is monotone, 5, 6, 7 of clubs. Folds to me here, and I uh, have around 170 in my stack, and there's 180 in the pot here. We have a pair on both boards. We have actually have a flush draw on the second board, so I decide to shove my entire stack in here. I'm just getting tired of folding and nothing happening. Got to spice it up a little bit. Uh, we end up getting called by the cutoff. The button now shoves all in, covering both of us, which we don't like. We're probably going to need to improve here. The cutoff doesn't look happy about it and makes the call as well, so three of us are... Uh, going to a turn two of us are all in and the button has us both covered 
On the top board, the turn comes the deuce of spades. On the bottom, it comes the king of diamonds. No help to us. The river comes the eight of clubs on the top board, and the bottom board is the ten of diamonds. So we actually improved the two pair there and the club draw breaks off. We're feeling decent about the second board till the cutoff shows pocket jacks, which beats us on the top board. We still have the second board locked up until the button rolls over three, four off suit. So he flopped it straight on that board. They end up chopping up our money and all the dead money. Good news is that we are doing double born bomb pots every 20 minutes and when the dealer changes, as well as there is a quote unquote mandatory straddle on. So there's no shortage of action. As long as we get some cards here, we can make some money. We drown our sorrows with a lovely green tea in a burrito bowl and then get back into the action for $450. Great news, Brad's getting close to our table. Oh wait, never mind, he skipped us. No worries, we'll make our own fun with another double board bomb pot. Wrong. Look down at seven deuce offsuit, AKA the hand where fun goes to die. Lose that pot obviously, but we pick up the action in this hand. We have $275 in late middle position with ace 10 offsuit. The straddle's on, I raise it up to $35. My left, the button, the small bind, and the straddle all put in the call. So we're going five ways to the flop with 175 in the pot, which comes nine tray tray. Checks to me, I jam for 240, putting pressure on anyone with overcards. Someone with a pocket pair could probably find a call here, but I'm gonna be putting pressure on overcards with no made hand that we're ahead of that we want protection from. Everyone folds, we take that pot, and we're gonna go on to the next hand. An interesting hand develops here with 350 in our stack. We look down at king queen of clubs from the button. The straddle is on, one limp to me, I raise it up to $40. We get called by the small blind, big blind, straddle, and the limper. So we're going five ways to the flop again, now with 200 in the pot. Flop comes king, five, four, rainbow. Checks to the middle position player who shoves for 165. Prior to this hand, he lost a fairly large pot uh, on the river and he looked pretty tilted about that. I call, everybody else folds. Turn with 530 in the pot comes the three of clubs. The river comes the king of hearts giving us trips. He asks if we have a king, I say yes. We show, he mucks, and so we're gonna scoop that pot and we're up to around $700. At this point, the table is wondering why Andrew Nimi or Brad Owen haven't stopped at our table yet. We're starting to wonder if someone at our table has the coronavirus because they're avoiding us like the plague. Either way, we get into another double born bomb pod here with around 670 in our stack. We have king queen offsuit. Fortunately, we whiff the flop. Somebody bets 50, we fold, pretty standard. Uh, ultimately, the cutoff ends up scooping the entire pot when he turns a flush on the bottom board and then reverses straight on the first board. Uh, easy game, I guess, when you're running good. At this point, we get a text from the girlfriend telling us that she wants to get pressed freeze and they close in about an hour. So we're handcuffed to rack up and head to the cage. We cash out for 643, so a profit of $193. But overall, we lost 471 in around six hours of play between the two games. So we exit the casino, check out the local volcano, and do our best Grand Theft Auto impression to make our way back to Los Angeles in time. We get to the Grove just in time to get two pressed freezes. I get mine with cookies, blueberries, and some cinnamon toast crunch sauce. And yes, it's even better than it sounds. She decides to get the vegan gummy bears. Our dog spots an enemy and decides to get into a standoff. Overall, when the girlfriend's happy, it's a good decision to leave the casino. She's happy, I'm happy. No complaints. On a side note, if you guys have a business or you need help with social media growth, uh, just in general, if you want to build a YouTube channel and make some extra money with it with one of your passions, feel free to reach out to me via email. I left it in the description below. That's what I do primarily. I'm not a poker player, obviously, as you can tell by some of my plays. I just do it for fun. If you have a business and you want to grow your Instagram page, if you want to grow your TikTok, Twitter, or you just want to start a new YouTube channel, I definitely can help you guys out. I also have another channel that has uh, 11,000 subscribers. I do video editing for um, some people that have YouTube channels over 10 million subscribers So I'm definitely well versed in the niche feel free to reach out to me via email We look down at our stack and we have around $2,000 now, which is absurd. We have pocket fives in the low jack. There's one limp to me as there has been a ton of limps in this game already. I raise it up to $12. I think it should be 15 to 18. Small blind, big blind, my right, all put in the call. In these games where people are limping and calling a lot, you need to be continually adjusting your sizing and increasing it until the point where you don't get any callers. Pocket fives here going to the flop four ways. We're gonna need to hit another set here, obviously. The flop comes queen of clubs, ace of diamonds, five of spades. What you expect so this card obviously cannot be the five of spades the five of spades is in my hand it can't be in my hand and on the board uh, about 50 to 100 people commented this one there are not multiple five of spades in the deck 
Go figure. With 1300 in our stack, we look down at Queen 9 of Diamonds from the big blind. Pretty suspect hand. The cutoff raises to $20, the button puts in the call, and I'm gonna go nowhere here. I know Queen 9 of Diamonds at most other casinos is a fold. Being that I'm on the button here and this is Lake Elsinore, I put in the call. Three ways to the flop with $60 in it comes six of hearts, seven of diamonds, eight of clubs. We have a backdoor diamond draw and an immediate up and down street draw. I check, the cutoff bet's 50, the button calls, and I'm going nowhere with this price. I put in the call. The turn with 210 in the pot comes a two of diamonds. We have four diamonds now, amazing, more outs for us. I check, the cutoff now shoves for 215, it's an over jam. He's representing an over pair here. I'm getting three to one on my money, so around 25% equity is what I need. I do the math and I have 17 outs, so approximately 34% versus an over pair. We do not have 17 outs in this hand, we actually have 15 outs. I double counted the cards that would improve me to a straight that were also diamonds, so I actually have 15 outs, so 15 ounce once is around 30%. Another mistake I made in this hand was saying that I have three to one on a call, I in fact have two to one. So in the long run, this is more of a gamble than a profitable play. Just need to put that out there so I could correct my mistake. Thanks for making it this far in the video, guys. If you did, be sure to hit the like button. It helps out the video more than you know. If you're new, consider subscribing. I make videos twice a week. It's a lot of content coming for you guys. As always, good luck at the tables. I hope you guys run well. I'll catch you guys in the next episode, but until then, peace. Thanks for watching to the end of my video. Click my head below to subscribe and stay in the loop. See you next time.